Pet presents White Sox Baseball. It's Paul Canerco, Adam Dunn, Gordon Beckham in the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Joe Maurer and Ron Garden hires Minnesota Twins. Hi, everybody, and welcome. We're Steve Stone. I'm Ken Harrelson. As we get set to bring you the first of this four-game set and the first of this day-night doubleheader. Well, game two will be at 7 o'clock, and we'll also have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet. But, you know, what a way to start this homestand. We, we're on a 10-game losing streak. We come home. we got the Yankees in, coming in and a sweep. It worked out exceptionally well, and it worked out well because of every element of the game. There was a highlight in every game, and Alex Rios helped break things open in the first game as our ball club club Andy Pettit, one of the few times they've been able to do that, and it worked out real well. Second game of the series on Tuesday, it was Chris Sale. Didn't have his great location with the fastball, but threw certainly well enough as the Sox able to hold off the Yankees for a 1-1 win. And then Wednesday. Enter the Sandman, trying to nail down a save. Well, it didn't work out that way. First, he blew the save with an Adam Dunn base hit, and then Alejandro Diaz driving the ball, winning the ball game late, an exciting finish, then the off day. So after winning three in a row, you have to figure this team's in pretty good spirits today. Well, one of the reasons they should be, too, Adam Dunn has been swinging that bat. Adam Dunn, for the better part of 51 games, has been absolutely unbelievable. Now, you expect him to hit the ball out of the ballpark. You expect him to drive in runs. But you don't expect him to hit 309 for the better part of seven weeks. But that's exactly what's happening. And he's moving the ball all over, hitting it left and right, hitting it out in left, center, and right. And Adam Dunn has really picked it up. He's starting to look like the guy that had such a great year last year. Now, Alex Rios, the big story because he was claimed by the Texas Rangers, but that doesn't mean Rick Hahn's going to give him away because he's not. He's going to get a return from them if he moves him, and we'll just have to see what the lineup looks like, and we'll have to see just exactly how that plays out. To this point, the Sox are playing pretty good baseball, and hopefully they continue it today. Well, we got a twin bill for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet, so sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T Uverse. Visit att.com slash free your TV. Rethink possible. And by Ford. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Welcome back to beautiful U.S. Cellular Field. And the big news at the ballpark is that Alex Rios or Cash has been traded to the Texas Rangers. And in return, there's either going to be a player to be named later or Cash considerations coming back this way. The end result is Rios not in the starting lineup. Rios on his way to Texas. He will be the Rangers' newest right fielder. And we certainly wish him well. So we're ready to play baseball after the big news. And I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. Hi, right, Stoney. Thank you very much. And once again, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. So happy you could join us for the first of this day-night doubleheader and this four-game series. Brian Dozier, the second baseman, hitting at 242, 10 homers, 44 knocked in, and the first pitch of the ball game from Johnny Danks is taken high and wide. Well, it was speculated on enough, and it finally came to fruition. And you'd have to thank Steve that after losing Nelson Cruz, among the other guys who are available, Texas probably got the best one. Well, I think they targeted him. They wanted him before the trade trading deadline. They couldn't reach an agreement. One of the reasons why they weren't near as motivated as they are now because <laughs> they truly felt that Nelson Cruz was going to appeal his suspension. Well, you'd have to think the price for us was better now. Yeah, and look, there was no way in the world that Rick was going to give him away. He gone. Nice change up. So no. we don't know who the player or players are. We would have to believe that they'd be pretty decent. Because Rick did not have a financial motivation to let Alex Rios go. Texas really needed him. He'll make Texas a better team. And as far as the Sox, they continue their tear down and rebuild, but they're doing it on the fly so that this can be a competitive team next year. I'm going to tell you they're going to win, but they'll be a competitive team. Here's Maurer. At 319, eight homers and 38 driven in. Takes first pitch strike. We don't have that far to go. As I said yesterday, you're never as good as you look when you're winning or as bad when you're losing. And with our pitching staff, rather than rebuild, reshape. Fine tune is a better terminology, I think. Well, certainly there has to be some addition of some offense. That goes without saying, and it doesn't take a road scholar to figure that out. This team has to get on base more. They have to score more, and they have to stay on base. Oh yeah, that would be nice. Once they get once on they base. get on there, they got to yeah. stay there so they won't get picked off. <laughs> Move up a base or two on occasion. Now our 20 for 51 lifetime off Johnny Danks. L2 pitch. There you go. Let's take a look at the lineup for Ron Gardner's twin. Dozier, Maurer, and Willingham, along with Morneau, Calabella, Arcia, Plouffe, Thomas, and Florimond rounding it out. The defense another the lineup behind Danks, the Isaac Cody and Danks in the infield, Gillespie, Ramirez, Beckham, and Canerco, Tyler Flowers behind the plate, and we'll get to Johnny Danks in a bit. And here's Willingham, just got reinstated today off the deal. Had a meniscus tear. Came back pretty quickly after surgery. The surgical techniques these days are absolutely remarkable. Not too many years ago, that might have put him on the shelf for the rest of the year. 
then you rehab and you get ready for spring training. But not so these days. Well, these days it's, it's just a different ball game. These days, these these doctors are taking what in my time zone were career ending injuries and having them back on the field in a month or two. And you can't say, you know, it's a minor surgery or it's one of these surgeries that, well, it's not all that uncommon and you know, success rate is very high because every surgery when done on somebody else is an important surgery, but they've gotten great at it. Nice play. Good peg. And a nice inning for Danks. One, two, three. After happening in play, it's the Twins nothing and our guys coming to back. Alejandro Diaz a leading it off, and he's been red hot. Seven game hitting streak. That's Beckham Ramirez done with Canerco, Gillespie, and Danks, along with Flowers and Blake Tacotti, a late insertion into the starting lineup. The defense, and now they'll line up behind Gibson. Arcia Thomas and Calabello. In the infield, it's Kluth, Florimon, Dozier, and Morneau. Joe Maurer behind the plate, and Alexis for swing protection starting pitcher is. Cal Gibson, former first round draft pick, the record of two and three, the ERA way up there at 669. Giving up a lot of hits. He has a tendency to fall behind. Left handers have killed him, right handers have hit him pretty well. So he's got a very good two seam fastball, which runs away from the left handers, but he consistently has been throwing ball one and most likely ball two. You cannot pitch like that. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours as here is Diaza Alejandro. At 276, 13 homers, 48 knocked in. Takes first pitch strike from the 6 6 right hander. That's yeah, a little looper. Didn't get a good read on it, but comes on and makes a catch, does Thomas? Thomas is not the center fielder that. The Twins thought they were going to have out there all year long. That was Aaron Hicks, another former number one draft pick. But Hicks just couldn't hit the curveball, couldn't adjust to it. They've sent him to the minor leagues. They still believe he's got a chance, but he really has to tear down that swing and rebuild it again to come back here. Well, you can play in the big leagues if you can cover the fastball. Well, they were pounding him inside. He was having trouble with that also. Well, then <laughs> he's right where he should be. Then. That's a problem. Yeah, he needs more at bats, and that's what yeah. they said. Send him down, get him more at bats, and we'll let a veteran, Cleet Thomas, play center field in the meantime. Yeah, you don't have to hit the curveball, but you better hit the fastball, or else you're not going to play in the big league. The key to playing and covering the fastball, though. Is don't swing at the curveball. Don't swing at the bad ones because you better believe he's chasing a lot of bad low and away curveballs. There's a lot of hitters that look for a certain pitch when they're ahead of the pitcher and then swing at something they're not looking for. Yeah. And that's inexplicable, but you see it all the time.
Gibson coming back from Tommy John surgery. So the elbow should not be a problem. What is a problem are counts like this 2031 to Gordon Beckham, who's been one of our hottest hitters. That's into left center field. And out number two. Well, I'm going to miss Alex. Alex is a gentleman. He's a fine person. Very quiet. Doesn't say much. Just takes it all in. And I'm going to miss Rios. Well, you would have to figure that Texas, because of the money situation there, they have a lot of it, and they also have a lot of talent in their minor league system. They had a choice of a whole lot of guys to fill that spot, certainly before and after the deadline. And they felt the best fit for them for not only this year, but for next year, with an option for the year after, was Alex Rios. And they went, they claimed him. We're ready to take all the money, but obviously... You can't just let them go out the door, so they had to give up something. Well, I'm glad that Rick Hahn showed the patience. He did that because he turned down a substantial deal, but one that he didn't think was good enough from Texas before the trade deadline. One and two the count. To Alexa hit. 286, a homer he's driven in 29. Sox come in hitting a 248 as a club with a 3.90 ERA. Sox 25 and 28 here at home. And this is the ninth meeting of the year between these two teams in the first eight. Minnesota won six of them. Soft line drive, and that'll retire the side. After one, no score. By Miller Light. Now, let's clarify the release one more time. The White Sox trade Alex Rios and cash considerations, thought to be around a million dollars, for a player to be named later or cash considerations. That's what Rios has done so far. And he's just actually started to get very hot. So they probably got him at the right time, certainly the right time for them, because I always felt they would pass Oakland by in the standings. Well they certainly got him at the right time as you mentioned. One one pitch to Morneau. Hi Papa. Here's our Lexus for Swing Perfection starting pitcher and it's Johnny Danks on for his 15th start. Two and nine ERA four and a half. The numbers actually aren't bad. The control's been good. He's had a tendency to be wild in a strike zone. 61 strikeouts. 
he'll get stronger. 20 home runs allowed. That's not a good number. That's the wild in the strike zone aspect. And this is very close to the one year anniversary of that surgery. He was told when the surgery was done, he would be at his full strength one year after the surgery. And so you'd have to feel that much better times are ahead for Johnny Danks. Colabello hitting at 179, three homers. He's driven in six. This guy's got some big power, and it's usually to right or right center field. Now John probably is going to try to cut the ball inside on him, but when Colabello does make contact, again, most likely it's to the off field. There it is, and it's deep. And it's one nothing. Minnesota. Home run number four, seventh driven in, 21st. John has given up. And Chris Colabello shows he does have some pop. A forward home run replay, this ball is away. Playing right into the strength of Colabello, who loves to go that way. And he took it out, giving the Twins an early lead. Now, Chris out of Milford, Mass. And here is Garcia. And that's not going to be playable. You saw this guy in the series in Minneapolis. What did you think of Oswaldo Garcia? He's got a chance. Looks like he's got pretty good, from what we've seen, pretty good play coverage, pretty good uh, patience, knowledge of the strike zone. How difficult is it? Now, he's a right fielder by trade, but with Willingham having the knee problems, he's been forced to go to left. Is that a natural transition from right field to left, or is it something you really have to learn? It, it depends on the individual. Some guys have trouble because of the angle. It's different. Exactly opposite of what you're used to seeing in right field. You're seeing a lot of balls come at you from right to left, left to right, out the other way. So it's just, you know, it's harder for an infielder to go from the right side to the left side than it is from the right fielder to go to left field. Because of the pop ups come down differently. And also second baseman shortstop if you think about it the shortstop always has a double play in front of him the shortstop always has the double play coming from behind him. And so you know you take a shortstop and say well he can certainly make the transition to second. That pivot whether you take a throw from third or short with the runner coming from behind you where you can't see him. That's a field play and yes. then you have to really learn how to defend yourself a shortstop can see it all the way and he can easily defend himself. Yeah. As the second baseman you better learn how to get your feet <laughs> off the ground. Well, you got, well, you're going to have knee surgery. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of good, hard, clean takeouts. As that ball hit down to Polly, suck it up. Two down. You know, the takeout has really come back into fashion as games are a little tougher and home runs aren't near as plentiful. You're seeing the importance of taking a guy out, keeping an inning alive, where you know, could you know you're not going to score six or seven or eight every day. That's why coaching first base is more important now than it's ever been. We had a great job by Davey Nelson back in 1983 with that ball club. That ball club. Beat more plays in the second base than any club I've ever seen. What, what, besides telling you about the first baseman if he's playing off the bag, what can a first base coach tell the base runner to help him? There, there's a lot of things according to who you're playing, according to uh, who's playing second, who's playing short. But the biggest thing is just getting you to make sure you get, you're on your toes, you get that good lead. That good secondary lead, so that you give yourself an, at least another step or a step and a half quicker to get to second base. Uh, 
Uh, that's foul, and that's going to be a souvenir. It's not done as much these days. You still have to worry about it when Yadier Molina is behind the plate, and at times Salvador Perez, who was just put on the DL. But that secondary lead is commensurate with will that catcher throw down behind you after your secondary lead? There's that's some guys. Part of it. Some guys, you take a secondary lead and you're dead. Salvador Perez. Yeah. Yeah, that's part of it. This is the last thing that uh, first base coach will tell the guys make sure you check your outfielders. And a lot of times, guys, they might be in a bit of a funk offensively. They get on first base and they're happy to get a base hit or whatever. And they forget to check the outfielders. You got to check your outfielders and you can't get, especially in certain situations, double up on the line drive. These are things that first base coaches are constantly telling you. Now, you get. Exceptions to that rule because you got some great base runners. First base coach doesn't need to tell him anything. No, you don't have that many as ball four issued to poof. Keep the inning alive for Cleet Thomas. Well, those guys are few and far between. You don't have a whole bunch of Willie Mays out there who doesn't need the first or third base coach. <laughs> he was a great one. Larry Walker didn't get a whole lot of credit for being as great a base runner as he was. He was just outstanding. Played for years with Montreal and then went to St. Louis. Well, one of the most deceiving guys on how big he was. He was a huge guy. He says popped up in the left field. But the home run by Chris Calabello, and it is one nothing wins. Showing you what Garcia, Papasel Garcia is doing down in Charlotte. 10 for 27, hitting a 370. One homer. Might be, and I imagine we're going to be seeing him very shortly. And Steve, he might be as fast as anybody in the American League. Well, I think he's going to be. Yeah, he's going to be thrilling in the outfield. And he's got one of the greatest arms of anybody in baseball. So, 6'4, 240. And he can play center field. He can do that. We saw him turn Nate Jones 99 mile an hour fastball around. If he can do that, then. Got a lot of good things going for him. Well, Rickon said that he wouldn't bring him to the major leagues until there was a spot for him to play every day. And it appears to me that there is a spot. Yeah. Adam fouls that back. Adam at 227, 26 homers, 69 driven in. Polly on deck. Now with Alex Rios, if you're just tuning in, did not hear. Alex Rios has been traded to Texas. Way out in front. That's a changeup by Gibson, which is very much still a work in progress. Not one of his better pitches, but that happened to be a very good one. He had Adam well out in front of him.
Yeah, with that trade, I'd be surprised if Abisel Garcia was not in the lineup tomorrow. Give that, our fans a chance to see that, that young maybe, man. Maybe before. That's out number one. And right now, let's check out our farmers insurance picks to click this afternoon. Command Joe, our director and crew, it's Canerico. See, he's going with Adam Dunn and Andy in the net of place. And I are going to go with Gordon Beckham. And he a builder of fine homes down in the Granger South Bend area. And here's Paulie. Paulie at 241, eight homers and 38 knocked in. Yeah, that's according to what the flight schedules out of Charlotte are. Oh, I, I know think my the, first appearance was against the White Sox, and I got I didn't get to the game till I think the fifth or sixth inning. I think that they're probably plentiful as far as ways to get here, if they are so inclined. And you know, Avisail can't wait. That ball hit deep. Stretch. He looks up. You can put it on the ball. And this game is tied at one. That ball was up and right down the middle of the plate. Turned into a ninth home run, 39th run driven in. Our forward home run replay. That's another high changeup. High changeups go a long way. And that's why we told you that Gibson's changeup is a work in progress. There's Gillespie, 238, nine homers, 26 driven in. Well, this is 431st home run, ties him with Cal Ripken Jr. for 44th all time. One in one to count. Yeah, my first major league at bat was against the White Sox in Kansas City. Charlie Finley called at 2 o'clock in the morning. We were playing poker. You were, you were called up during the season? Yeah, we were in Seattle. I just struck out four times that night against Jerry Stevens. Well, at least you showed him that you could do that. Didn't even tick a ball. <laughs> Didn't even tick one. So at 2 o'clock, the phone rings, and that's not a good time to get a phone call. Usually not, no. So we're in the middle of a poker hand. <laughs> Mo Drabowski, myself, a couple other guys. Son, this is Charlie. We're bringing you up. Get the first plane out tomorrow morning. Well, they didn't have anything from Seattle. It was, it was empty or seats available. So I had a later flight. I flew into Chicago. Got the, I mean, to Kansas City. Went to the ballpark. Got there about the sixth inning, fifth inning. They were playing the White Sox. Juan Pizarro was pitching. And I pinch hit like in the seventh. Didn't get any sleep. First pitch he threw me was a fastball, and I saw two of them coming at me. So you picked you picked the one that was most likely to be there? I didn't hit it. I struck out. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first major league at bat. No sleep. Struck out four times the day before. And they call Charlie Smart. So here's Danks. Jordan at 146, a homer. He's driven in a pair. That's a bullet right back through the middle. That a boy, Jordan. This is the first time ever that Jordan Danks has started a game. His brother has also started. And so he takes one right back up the middle, almost gets a piece of Gibson on its way up the center field. Here's Tyler. 
Hitting at 200, nine homers, 24 knocked in. Blake to Cody on deck. This is why Gibson's ERA is over six and a half. He's just consistently falling behind. But eventually, you've got to come to major league hitters when they're looking for the one pitch you might be able to get over the plate. Takes it foul. So one out, two on. One in. Tied at one. Bottom of the second if you're just joining us. Gibson out of the University of Missouri. They thought highly enough of him to pick him in the first round, the 22nd pick overall in 2009. And that's a souvenir. Went to high school, Greenfield Central High School, Indiana. And another foul tip. First of a day night doubleheader. Game two will start at seven this evening and we'll have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet. He just missed that one. High in the left field. And that is out number two. It's another changeup, and he got very fortunate. When you leave changeups up that high on the inner portion of the plate, more times than not, it's going to be hit awfully hard. A lot of times they'll go out of the park. That time, Tyler just got under it, but it's not a particularly good pitch. Uh, that was one thirty second of an inch away from being a three run homer. A long one. A big time one. Yeah. Long one. So here is Blake. To Cody. Hitting at two fifty. Takes ball one. Of course he had no idea whatsoever that he was going to be in the starting lineup today. Alex came to the ballpark as if. It was just another day in the starting lineup. Then we got a new lineup. He was pulled out of the lineup and Lake Dakota inserted in the lineup after Alex was traded to the Texas Rangers. There's a shot. So Hank Wolfham for Blake, but the homer by Canerco ties it at one.
What about David Kaplan? Well, tonight we're going to promo him. In okay. Promo in a minute. Foreman. Pedro hitting a 228, seven homers, 35 driven in. He gone. Tonight, join host David Kaplan for Sports Talk Live, presented by Land Rover. Cap and his panel will break down today's game, get their take on all the biggest topics in sports. Certainly, they're going to talk about the Alex Rio situation. So don't miss Sports Talk Live tonight at 5.30 on Comcast Sportsnet, and I will be one of his guests. I wouldn't miss that for the world. Oh, it's going to be delightful. Here's Dozier. Starts him off with a changeup. High. Johnny ever gets it in his mind. Every time that. Wiggling of the fingers there. For a changeup. Shows up. If he ever gets in his mind. To think down. He'll be. Well suited. Oh, he's going to do that. I, and I think as soon as he gets the appropriate arm strength back like he had before and starts throwing 93, stays on top of the ball, which is a key to any changeup, staying on top of it, I think it will stay down. I think it will stay down like he did in his pretty good years. And he'll be a much better pitcher for it. That ball smoked. Down into the corner. The Dozier who swings the bat extremely well against us. In the second. 23rd double of the year. Is Brian Dozier who seems to have secured that spot at second base. Takes one out away. And drills it. Putting him in scoring position but there is an out. So here's Maurer he struck out. In the first. Feels slightly to the left, about equidistant. Willingham on deck. Boy, that is a dangerous little move that Dozier went back into second base on. You don't want to go back into second base with your feet pointing to the pitcher. It's probably not the best idea. No. There was also a time when. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if you consistently went back and they knew you were going back head first, especially if you had to go back a long distance, they kind of buried you right there at second. Well, once they give a warning, if you really want to get somebody, you're better off getting them to either first or second. <laughs> it's true. That ball lined in the left field. We got a man there. About number two. Yeah, we had a pitcher with the Red Sox. He tried to get this guy on the Tiger team. And he missed him. Tried to get him twice. He missed him. He walked him. He's on first base. And uh, I knew what he was thinking. Sure enough, he throws over there. A little commercial toss. And threw over again. A couple of pitches later, he throws over and he brings his best fastball over there. And I just let it go. And bounced it right off his body. <laughs> I just let it go right by. <laughs> One spring, Chuck Tanner had 
all our first baseman but the White Sox play behind the runner behind him when he took his lead and you can't believe how many times the ball bounced off the guy at first and I was wondering why it was I mean I know you'd hit him and all that just wondering why it was worth giving him second base just because you know he was trying something new but it didn't carry over into the season. Well actually playing behind or in front of a guy who especially a guy who can run is the best way to do it. You're, you're better off getting him trying to think a little bit to kill his rhythm and his timing than holding him on normally. That change up way outside. Willingham granted went in the hole left side it Lexi made a real fine play. Picking it up and then a nice peg to get him at first. Two two pitch. It's full. But Willingham last year just had a huge year 35 home runs 110 driven in that was at the age of 33. He had career highs in games played with 145 so. They felt that he was going to be their right handed power but unfortunately his need hasn't allowed him to do it this year. There's looking one of the best in the business Ron Gardner. He is that. And over the last couple of years he has just not had. Enough talent. Too many injuries. And a farm system that's stuck. At the lower portion of the system and doesn't have ma many major league ready players. Got him with a change. And that'll retire the side. Four strikeouts now for tanks. And we're tied at one. Top ranked teams go head to head just feet from Navy Pier with pride and prize money on the line. The Chicago Match Cup Finals Sunday at 430 only on Comcast Sportsnet. One two and oh for both teams here in the bottom of the third. Top of the order Diaz Beckham. And Alexei. And once again if you're just tuning in. Alex Rios is now a Texas Ranger. And a terrific move by Texas. With the loss of Nelson Cruz. And the fact that the Rangers find themselves in virtually a dead heat with Oakland. Tied for first. One back in the loss column, one up in the win column. There are the standings as we start today's play. 
The Mariners, well back. The Angels, a most disappointing year for them. Astros, of course, very much in a rebuilding mode. It's going to take a while for them. But the two teams at the top, very good. And it's going to make the loser of that battle head to head. Pretty interesting battle for a wild card. Beckham went out to left, takes ball one. Well, this, this deal today may have just put Texas over the top. And that's popped up. Florimont. I think it really gives Texas exactly what they need. Yeah. You know, you, you've already got, you've got Kinsler, you've got Beltre from the right side. You've got Andrus, who's not, not a power hitter, but a good hitter from the right side. Uh, they needed one more bat. And they preferred a bat who could also play defense for them. And that's Alex Rios. Plus, he's having one of his great years in stealing bases, which always helps. Well, he's 26 for 32 in stolen bases. And you also, you also can't help when you move into a situation where you have a good shot at going to the playoffs and you're joining a new team. It's going to give him a great deal of adrenaline. This is going to be a huge boost for Alex Rios. I'm not, not going to be surprised if he has just a terrific last part of this season for the Rangers. I'd be surprised if he did. And that's a nice one, two, three inning for Kyle Gibson. New Cool Ranch Doritos, Locos Tacos from Taco Bell, Live Mots. First ball hunting is Justin Morneau. High pop up. The next day, one pitch, one out. Morneau's going to be interesting for Minnesota. There was no doubt that he was available to trade deadline, but they didn't get anything near what they thought was value for him, so they kept him. And there is some thought that they're going to bring him back for one more year. Now I would think as the only real left handed power hitter although it's not been a great power year for him. That could balance out their lineup plus he's one of the most popular players that the twins have had in many many years. Here's Chris Colabella. It is fourth home run into the. Their bullpen. Right center. You know the funny thing about. When I walked in the clubhouse this morning. 
That ball hit hard. And nobody's going to get that one. One hot. So a ground rule double for Colabella. So when I walked in the clubhouse, I was going back to see Dr. Herm. And Alex Rios' locker is the last locker before you go through the shower area to get back to the training room. I looked at Alex. I said, You still here? <laughs> he started laughing. <laughs> 20 minutes later, he was traded. Yeah. I walked in with him. I was not surprised to see him here. I would have been surprised had he started the first game today. And as it turned out, he didn't. But you know, Rick said all along he wasn't going to give him away. He wasn't going to lose him for the waiver price. And Tyler Flowers couldn't locate it at first, finally did. And held Calabello at second base. And they obviously got. Look, you're not going to get a star back. I mean, that's that's unrealistic. But a useful player back. And a lot of salary relief. Really helps a few things for this Sox club going forward. Look at the play. Look at the play by. Alexei Marcy. And now they'll put it on him. What a beautiful play by Ramirez. Yes. A great play by Ramirez. A great thought process by Ramirez. And the best rundown I've seen all year. The reason being that there was one throw. And it was from Alexei to Gillespie. And then what he did was force the hand of Calabello and not make another throw. So a great stop. This is just an unbelievable play and he's looking right at Gillespie as he sees that Colabella was hung out to dry. And this is how you work a rundown. You try as few throws as you possibly can. That's usually one. And that's what happened. So here's Ploof. He walked his first trip. What a play. Chops that one foul. That's off his leg or foot. Luth has some big power, although he hasn't shown it this year, and he's very much fallen victim to off speed pitches. And right now, he's trying to shake off that foul ball as they come out to have a word with him, find out if he's okay. Yeah, Trevor can hit it a long way. I've seen him going that up a tank in yep. batting practice. And target feel, that's the jaunt. You can tell by that shin guard that he does hit the ball off his leg a lot. And if that shin guard actually was in the spot where it got hit, it probably would have helped him. But it wasn't. He hit it right off the top of his left foot. And That's the shin, where shin, Alex got one the other shin day. guard gave him no protection whatsoever. Yeah. I was very fortunate because when you bail out as much as I did, it's impossible to hit that front foot. <laughs> impossible. That changeup is down. Two out, one and two to count. Well, I've seen some funny swings, some pitchers over the years. And there's a little duck snort. So two on two out. Certainly now that play by Ramirez looks a whole lot better. Not only that he stopped it and stopped a sure base hit but that he cut down the lead man at second base. So no runs. With a couple of hits and a rocket. Before Thomas comes up. Thomas who went out to left field. I think the worst two I've ever seen pitchers hitting. Dean Chance and Hank Gary. 
There's a nice little two hopper. And that'll retire the side. So a little jam there, no problem. We're going to the bottom of the four, still tied at one. In game live only at CSNChicago.com brought to you by Comcast Business Class. And we understand there's a chance that Abacel Garcia will be in that lineup tonight. I would assume they're trying everything they can to get him here now that the opening is created and get a chance to see as much of him as possible. And I think. All of our fans are going to enjoy the way he plays the game. Because there's nothing he can't do. Well, the energy that he showed us in that Tiger uniform, we need some of that. Now we got it. Six, four, two, forty, it might be as fast as anybody in the American League. Adam. That's a high pop up. Adam's got that bat on a good plane. That's one reason he's been hitting very well. What I like about what he's been doing, he's gotten so many hits to the left side that all of a sudden the teams that were radically shifting and putting three infielders on the right side, almost without exception in the shifts we've seen, we've still seen the second baseman back on the grass, but we see the shortstop. Never now on the first base side of second. So he's kept his position, moved a little closer to the bag, but it's not the same radical shift that robbed Adam of a lot of base hits. Yeah, the shift has robbed him last year and this year of more hits than any shift I have ever yep. seen on somebody. Pauly who Homer pops that one up to left field. Here's our Xfinity high speed and came with one out in the second inning. All gets a change up up and out over the plate. Delivers his ninth home run of the year. So here's Gillespie. He walked. We have a run on just two hits. They have a run on four hits. That's going foul. Now 
also you'll have a chance tonight to see one of our left handers making his major league debut. Out on that bump. And his name is Charlie Leesman. count. And get through it, Will. The second game starter is Liam Hendricks. Called up from Rochester, where he really struggled. Charlie Leesman has had a pretty good run at Charlotte in AAA. 13 starts, a 3 and 1 record. 3.5 ERA, bonus hitting 263. So, a righty and a lefty will go to the mound in the 7 10 second game of this split doubleheader. And we'll have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Yes, here's Jordan. He almost took Gibson off the mound with a line shot. It takes first base strike. Another guy I like a lot, Marcus Simeon, infielder. Did a two run homer last night. In the eighth inning to win that game for Charlotte. Three to two. Good looking young infielder, Marcus Simeon. That got him. So two on two out. That's the fourth guy that Gibson has hit this year. That slider moving in a little bit farther than Gibson would have wanted. There are two outs, but they're two on. Bowers just missed one. Got a high change up. Just missed hitting it out of here. Fouls that one back. But prior to that, he had a couple of good pitches to hit and fouled them off. And that evens counted one. Yeah, we got two today with these guys. Then tomorrow, Sunday. Then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Tigers come to town. The Tigers, who are as hot as any team in baseball, winners of 12 in a row. And they went in and decimated the Indians. Did exactly what they had to do. Indians now find themselves seven games in back. Well, it just goes to show you what one game can do. First game of that series was maybe going to be going down as the definitive game for Cleveland and the definitive game for Detroit this year. And it turned out to be with Detroit rallying for four in the ninth inning, seemingly taking all the air out of the balloon. Detroit continued to score in the series. That's what the Central looks like. Max Scherzer ran his record to 17 and 1. As the Tigers have averaged about seven and a half runs every time Scherzer goes to the mound. He throws very well. This is not to diminish Max Scherzer. No. It's just that he's got an offense behind him that scores him a ton of runs. As he gets out of it, we're into the fifth, still tied in one.
home run by Chris Colabello in the second inning and a home run by Paul Canerco in the second inning. Florman fouled it right off his foot. Guy who was hitting well for them, who had a very good series against us, was Ryan Domit. Especially from the right side, and he would have played today, but they put him on the disabled list. It was a seven day concussion disabled list. So he's not available. That allowed them to activate Willingham, but took a good right handed bat out of their lineup. Well, we got Avisail Garcia coming up and from the looks of things, Liuri. Garcia. Yeah, we're pretty much trying to corner the market on Garcia's. Could Freddie be far behind? Probably. We saw Garcia Leary in that series down there when we were in Texas. He can run. Two and two. If it's the same. If he's the guy, he can <laughs> Leary, really run. We saw he could run, yeah. Here you go. Five strikeouts now. Florman didn't like this, but after a steady diet of pitches inside, he gets a high change away. And it might have had, well, it did have a piece of the outside corner. And Brian Knight rung him up. One walk, five Ks. Johnny Danks in a 1 1 battle. Well, I love the idea of getting speed. Whew. It sure helps in close games. It helps if you've got guys who can close the gaps in the outfield, close some of the holes in the infield, and steal a base for you. And that's what gets you to postseason play, winning close games. You got to play well in your own division, and you got to win close ball games. Do that, you got a good chance. Get it. The postseason. Winning in the division has certainly been problematic for our Sox this year. In the division, 12 and 31. That means on September 28th, you go home. Yes, it does that. On the road, 18 and 41. And so those two numbers resonate when you're looking at what what went wrong this year. I mean, we know the reasons why these things happen, but when you're when you're looking at those two numbers in the division. And on the road where you need to be as close to 500 as possible, preferably over if you can. It's been pretty tough. Dozier, a strikeout and a double. It's also nice to see, Hawk, that Bruce Chen can actually beat somebody other than our ball club. He beat John Lester in the Red Sox last night, and I mean, took him into the eighth inning and didn't give him any runs. So someone else has problems with the soft tossing. Very crafty lefty. He go. Two down. Strikeout number six. A great changeup. That's exactly where John's got to keep it. Get ahead. Throw that change. Let it just settle, low and away. And you're going to get a lot of people out. Mauer has struck out and lined out hard to left. Alfield straight up, spread out. Small gap out there in left center.
there. And the count's three and one. And that's both. So the second walk issued by Danks. And that'll bring up Willingham. It was robbed of a base there on a beautiful play by Alexei. And the strikeout. He checks it up. Want to know the count? That one just missed off the outside corner. Not a bad pitch, but a good eye by Willingham. And that evens it. Also, in case you did not hear, the Phillies claimed Casper Wells off waivers. So he is in Philadelphia. The change up to this point for Danks has been very good. Checked it up again. Now this text that I got is saying that this Leury Garcia can play second, short, and center field. And probably projected as a super utility man with a great arm and great speed. We get a guy who can steal some bases. And if he is the guy at just 22 years old, he's going to get better. All you got to do is learn how to make some contact, bunt the ball. And if you can put him anywhere, what flexibility he gives you. He gone. Strikes out the side. We're halfway home. Still tied at one. It will be interesting. See Garcia. 
and a lot of fun. But right here we get ourselves a 1-1 one, one tie. 1-4-0 one, for all the Twins. 1-3-0 for our Sox. Blake to Cody. He's been in the play one time. He hit a bullet. Right to Morneau at first base. Good man to have on base with some speed and the top of the order coming up if Blake can get out. Takes first pitch strike. Feel spread out. Gap out there in right center. And the count two and one. Everything else is under the lights. Around Major League Baseball. Cleveland hosting the Angels. Detroit taking on the Yankees in the Bronx. Boston and Kansas City. Philly. At Washington, Oakland, up in Canada with the Blue Jays, San Diego at Cincinnati, Atlanta hosting the Marlins as that pitch is fouled back, Texas at Houston, Cubs taking on the Cardinals in St. Louis, Pittsburgh at Colorado, Pirates, 26 games over 500. Two changeups inside, then a fastball, and it caught the corner. I think what Blake was thinking that first pitch, if that was a strike, then that one would. But one out. So here is Daza going out to center, grounded to first. Other action shows the Mets. In Phoenix, take on the D backs, Milwaukee at Seattle, Tampa Bay against the Doyers in Los Angeles. Oh, and one to count. Better part of a month, Alejandro Diaz has been hitting 339. He's scoring a lot more runs than he's driving in, but he drove in a pair and they were huge, winning the final game of the Yankees series on Wednesday night. Softly hit up the middle. Floor bond. Two down. Sox fans join us on Wednesday, September 11th at 710 when our Sox take on Detroit. And we pay special tribute with First Responder Night presented by Gov-X. Gov-X savings for those who serve. So WhiteSox.com or 866-SOX-GAME. Gordon can't get it.
chases that one. A couple of good sliders back to back, and this is more like the Gibson that they imagined when they drafted him number one. Gordon has consistently made good solid contact, but not so much today against Gibson. Count. No, this is a little unusual for Gordon. Since he's come back, he's been hitting the ball better than anybody on the club. And that's ball four. So the second ball issued by Cal Gibson. And that'll bring up Alexei. Hit a little soft line drive to third, and he rounded to short. Beckham five out of six in stolen bases, and what he would like to see, because he undoubtedly has not seen it yet, is Gibson's best move. With that in mind, you take a one-way lead, a bigger lead than normal, with the only thought of going back to first base and forcing the pitcher to show you the best move he's got. And in case you did not hear, you're just getting home. Alex Rios has been traded to Texas. And he might be just what the doctor ordered for that ball club. Starting to swing that bat well. And he's going to catch everything in right field. Well, the Rangers have won nine of their last ten, four in a row. So he's joining a hot club. Yeah, but you, you mentioned something the other. A couple of innings ago. It's so true. It's not so much getting traded, who you get traded to. Where are they in the standing? Are they in the race? Are they out of the race? Well, these guys are in the no, race. No, these are right, right in the middle of the race, and as you can see, that is the deal. And that adrenaline will flow. I don't think like that pitch, but it was an excellent pitch. It had most of the strike zone on the outside corner. Decent lead by Gordon. Checks it up and fouls it off. This will make that outside corner look a little further away for a slider. Yeah, and that tends to upset a hitter. Get one high neck in, then they hit the corner on the black, low and away. <laughs> or throw you one just off the corner and you're going out to try to get it. <laughs> yeah, that's not nice. That's not fair. Last four, Alexi has been red hot. Hitting over 500, scored three, driven in two. Two out, two balls, two strikes.
the second game of the season until August 8th. This second home run, and we lead it three to one. Our fourth home run replay, home run number two. He's driven in 31, continues his red hot hitting, and he's saved up a long time for that long <laughs> ball. Adam is grounded to second. And he's popped up to right field. One and one to count. Takes the high strike. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two in. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Three, four, and zero oh for us, one, four, and zero oh for them. And all three runs, courtesy of the long ball, the solo home run by Paul with one out in the second, and two run homer by Alexi here. And a full count. Decent stat. Two or more home runs hit by our ball club. The team is 17 and 9. So that bodes well for today, especially the way John Danks' changeup looks. So the second walk of the inning. And that'll bring up Polly. Polly is homer and going out to left. And Rick Anderson out. Want to be traded like a White Sox player? We'll join former White Sox great at Chicago White Sox Fantasy Camp January 13th through the 19th, 2014, at the White Sox Spring Training Facility in Glendale, Arizona. So, for additional information, call 312 674 5398. That's 674 5398. Here is Polly. Count evens at one. The biggest problem for the Twins this year has been starting pitching. The starting pitching, ERA is in the neighborhood of five and a half. And even though the bullpen has been very good, starting pitching has put them in a hole. They've had a hard time coming back. That ball hit right at it. So another hang wolf him. For Canerco, but the two run homer. By Alexi Ramirez, we lead it three to one.
guys here in the top of the sixth inning. First pitch to Justin Morneau. Little wrinkle right there for a strike. Morneau has popped to left and popped to short. Al feels straight up. Fouls that one away. And earlier, Alex Rios had a chance to talk to our beat writers. And let's see what he had to say. Well, I, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, I wasn't expecting it, but uh, at the same time, you know, it, it could happen. It, it could have had uh, happened, and it did happen. So uh, now it's uh, it's just a new chapter in my life and in my career. So uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, it's uh, it's finally over. You know, it, it was uh, a little bit of a, of a distraction uh, when it was while it was going on. But uh, now that it just that it happened, it's, uh, I'm 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 going to be able to focus on what I have to do, and that that would be uh, playing uh, good baseball. Well, we wish him nothing but the best. Alex has said, as a gentleman, good teammate. But right here, Chris Colapello, a homer and a double. A homer into the bullpen in right center and a double. One hop, ground rule double into right center. Count evens at one. Thanks now with eight strikeouts. And he's been pretty impressive today, throwing the ball where he wants to. None of that wildness in the strike zone that we've seen on other occasions. And just the one walk. He's trying to force Calabello to swing at an inside pitch. Two walks today, excuse me. And count three and one. Well, you can't blame him. Well, he's crushed the ball twice and he's taken it the opposite way both times. Oh yeah, nice change up. Good motion. Full count. The ability to get anything but a fastball over in a fastball situation makes you a pitcher. And that was a fastball situation. Time now for the Ava Super Slow Mo replay. In the last time Garcia was up. Runner at second, only one out. Lexi Ramirez makes a great play and then elects to go to third base. Connor Gillespie faking the throw but not letting the baseball go. Puts the tag on Calabello. And just a terrific physical play, great execution. Yeah, you want to show him the baseball? Show your second baseman with a shortstop, the baseball. Preferably just the one throw. And, and, that's it. and once you let the ball go, follow the throw. Away from the base runner, clear the base paths. And you'll have somebody behind you, but hopefully it won't be a necessity. And hopefully it won't be a pitcher. <laughs> hopefully it will not be a pitcher, no. They have a tendency to get rid of the ball too quickly anyway. It's almost like a charcoal briquette, briquette. You've got no glove. Catch it and throw it back, and before you know it's it, used. it's used. It's in a sixth throw. It's in a sixth throw rundown. Yes, he did. Beautiful day here in the city. Beautiful. As Ernie would say, a great day to play too. That's softly hit in the right field. Two down. Sox fans join us on Saturday, September 14th at 6 10 for 
6 10 p.m. for halfway to St. Patty's Day and post game fireworks presented by Miller Lite. Also, the first 20,000 adults aged 21 and over will receive a green White Sox cap. So, 866 Sox game or WhiteSox.com. You mentioned Ernie Banks and his saying, it's a good day for two. Let's play two. Well, they were playing in Colt 45 Stadium. And that's it was in Houston. And it was oppressive humidity, as it always is in the summertime. No dome, of course. And Ernie was saying, you know, pregame practice, let's play two. Good day for two. Well, they carried him out before the second game. <laughs> and all the players were yelling at him. Good day. Good day for two, huh? He just, he got at third base after running one, just kind of eased on down. They took him out, <laughs> left the rest of the boys to play two. Yeah. Oh, that's Ernie. Ernie, a good man. He came into Booth, an old Comiskey Park. Drysdale and I were doing the game. He came into Booth, looks at me and points at me and goes, I want you. I want you on that golf course. Yeah, that'd have been a big mistake. I played with Ernie. I said, Ernie, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said, I want you at $25 NASA. I want you on your own golf course. Yeah. Well, make, make, you, you need to make him put up the money first. I will tell you that. So sure enough, <laughs> we play a couple days later. <laughs> We're playing in a foursome. And beside him playing me, we were playing him and somebody else, my partner and I. And all of a sudden, we get through nine, Ernie says, can we drop the individuals and just focus on the team? <laughs> I thought he was going to give you, my back has stiffened up a, a touch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they got it gone. So, nine strikeouts. Eight was a season high, but we lead it three to one. The U.S. Bank Flex Perks Travel Rewards Visa Signature Card. So apply today at any U.S. Bank branch. 3-4-0 for our Sox. 1-4-0 for their Twinkies. Gillespie has walked and singled. First pitch strike. Checks it up. He did not go. Danny V loosening up. In game two tonight. 7 10 start. That ball hit hard, but foul. Making his major league debut for us will be Charlie Leesman. 
left hander against Liam Hendricks. Then tomorrow, Andre Rienzo against Mike Pelfrey. Then on a Sunday, Jose Quintana against Kevin Correa. And we'll have the game tonight. We can't make it to the ballpark also. Abisail Garcia might be in that lineup tonight. Two two pitch. Full count. All four base hit. Got him. One down. Brian Knight is calling the inside pitch. This one borderline. But he rings him up. There's Jordan. He had a rocket right back through the middle for a base hit. And then he was hit by a pitch. Out in front. And going foul. Organized a group outing of 20 or more for a Sox game during the season. Receive savings off the individual game ticket price. Enhance your outing by upgrading to our new Miller Light Bullpen Party Porch, pregame patio party, or Diamond Suite, or one of our other great party areas. So 312 674 1000 or whitesox.com. That is for Tucci Boys area. Bobby Bruno and Handsome Anthony. They'll take care of you. Change up way out in front. That one was a good straight change. Usually been throwing that about 84 miles an hour. Twin bullpen up and going as Gibson gets very close to the 100 pitch mark. Another full count. Brian Dunsing, the left-hander, throwing in the pen. And there's ball four. So the fourth walk. Issued by Gibson. And the two home runs have accounted for the three runs. Four walks a little bit more than he or Ron Gardner or Rick Anderson would want. Breaking ball. Foul back by Tyler. Tyler just missed a high changeup, just missed hitting it out of here. And also struck out. Very quickly, the count nothing and two with Blake Cody on deck. First of two against these twins today. Second one tonight, 7 10 start. So make your plans to be with us. Just a decent lead by Jordan.
You would think that if Gibson does not get flowers. He probably won't be around to face to Cody. Got him. And he got him and he's still not going to be around to face to Cody. That fastball catches the outside corner. So all in all into the sixth inning not a bad job by the rookie right hander. It looks like Ron Gardner is going to give him the pat on the back. Here comes Brian Dunsing. So as he comes running in we'll step out and be back after these messages. Play presented by St. Xavier University. St. Xavier University, success with purpose. 3w.sxu.edu. Our Honda call to the pen is Brian Dunsing. The left hander is 4 and 1 this year, the ERA 433. He's been a busy man on for the 52nd time. Patrol's been pretty good. He's only given up a couple of home runs. And that's excellent. In 51 previous appearances, he inherits a base runner at first base, and he'll face Blake Tacody with two outs. Blake 0 for 2. He's lined very hard to first and called out on strikes. Gap out there in right center if he can find it. First ball fastball. It was up and out over the plate. Had a good swing, but fouled it straight back. Yeah, he put a good pass on that one. Just underneath it. Oh, and to the count. Turning in. Home run by Colabello, right center field. Second inning. And then Canerco came right back in the bottom of the second to Homer. And then Alexei, first Homer since second game of the season. Two run shot in the fifth inning, and that is it. Decent lead by Danks. And that'll do it. 
We're into the seventh, leading three to one. reporters for us it's another another stop step in the process of retooling this club uh, it's difficult to give uh, to let a player like Alex Rios go uh, he in my opinion has been uh, outstanding for us both on and off the field during his stay in Chicago and uh, you know a pure pure class act uh, at the same time this opens up an opportunity for playing time for Abisail Garcia who will be traveling to Chicago right now and uh, hopefully he'll be here for tonight's game. Uh, and that is uh, a big consideration for us as we start to retool this club and bring in that next group of guys and get them going on their major league career and development. The positives of an unfortunate season like this is we're going to have the opportunity in all probability to spend a lot more money on amateur talent. Uh, so certainly any savings is, uh, that, that's probably going to be the first couple of line items next year will be what we spend on the draft and what we spend internationally. Even after that, given the flexibility that's opened up, there will be the opportunity, you know, whether it be via trade or free agency, to perhaps take on more money. As, as we started with the young pitching, which made us feel good, and now this flexibility and the addition of a player like Garcia makes us feel even better that we're going to be able to turn this around on a, as quickly as possible. All righty. There it is. There's the 3 1 pitch. And there is the leadoff walk. Clay Thomas. Well, the bullpen has been up and going, so they're ready to go. That's a fourth walk issued by Danks. One of the good things about the deal is the financial flexibility. Rick alluded to spending money in the international market, also in the draft. But I think the payroll obligated is anywhere from 48 to 50 million for next year, so they shed a lot. A lot of payroll in a very short period of time. And the flexibility will be evident this winter. One and over the count. Four mono for two with a couple of strikeouts. One swinging, one called. Beal and Lindstrom throwing in the pen. Gap out there in left center. Well, there's one of the options the club has when they have financial flexibility. You never know what's going to pop up. No, and this is not going to be the greatest free agent class, but there's going to be some good ones out there. I'm not going to say you want to spend all your money on one guy because one guy's not going to get it done. That being said, there'll be some other guys out there who could make your team better who, if you were tied up,
close to 100 million, maybe a little over that, you couldn't even think of adding them to your team. And not to mention some of the real good Cuban players that come on the market. Yasiel Puig costs $42 million. Again, not saying you spend that on him, but there are some others that will come out that if you don't have any financial flexibility, you can't even make an offer for them. Well, and also they have, it gives you an opportunity because we've got some guys down there that some other teams like. It gives you an opportunity for them. As that's back to back walk. Wow. He's at the 113 pitch mark, and I think that's going to be it for him. This is a season high in pitches. He had his high strikeout mark, but it seems like he's just running out of gas. Well, the five walks and nine strikeouts. He threw the home run to Colabello back in the second inning. It was a good strong outing for Johnny, except for the five walks and two of them coming right here. So he departs. Landstrom comes on, and we'll be back. Five of them came swinging, and they all came on the same pitch. The straight change, which was a very good one for John today. And the finale of the five, good straight changes. Our hunter called the pen is Matt Lindstrom. He comes into this one for the 56th time, the record at two and three, the ERA three and a half. And he will inherit runners at first and second. He's in a jam. There's nobody out here in the seventh inning. And it's only a two run lead. So he's got to go through the top of the order to get out of this inning. Brian Dozier. One for three, a double. And a couple of strikeouts. Hit him in the batter's box, and right away, Brian Knight said that it was a foul ball. Oh, I won the count. Would have been a pretty good break if it wasn't. But it comes up right there. You can see clearly that it did hit him. Dead ball. Big gap out there in left center. Gillespie and on the grass, as is Pauly. Mauer on deck. Willingham in the hole. Takes the butt, takes the ball to even the count at one. Talking about Ernie Banks last inning, and today it was announced that Banks would receive the Presidential Medal of Freedom. It's nice. Yeah. 
He's been a phenomenal goodwill ambassador for the game of baseball, though these many years. Indeed, he has. Looks like Dozier's trying to make this a two way bunt. When that's not what I don't think Gardner wanted. Now with Meyer, Willingham, and Morneau. Well, he's got very little choice but to swing it now. Long set. Now accepts. Three one Sox lead it here at the top of the seventh inning. Good try. That one just misses the outside corner. There was what you call an emergency swing. Well, he realized that that was going to be too close to take, even though it dipped out of the zone. So Dozier, knowing that he's got to do whatever he can to stay alive, able to fight it off. He gone. Now a big out. Good hard slider. That one dipping out of the zone and Dozier who could not get down a bunt on two different attempts. A strikeout bigger. And Robin goes out. Matt Lindstrom has done his job. He wants Donnie Veal. So Veal to face Maurer. And as Lindstrom departs and Veal walks in, we'll walk out. Be back after these messages. Greats, the big hurt Frank Thomas, Ozzie Gian, Derek Lee, and Jamie Moyer for a day of Southside versus Northside softball. Now, the All Star Softball Challenge will take place at Boomer Stadium in Schaumburg. Today will include a skills clinic for kids prior to the game. Take us 15 bucks and proceeds benefit Chicago White Sox charities. Our Honda call to the pen is Donnie V. inherits. Base runners at first and second, one out, facing Joe Maurer. 
There you look at the numbers. It'd be interesting to see what Maurer sits on right here on first pitch. It's hard to do it, but he does it a lot, and he does it probably better than anybody in this league. And that is, he'll sit on first first ball breaking ball from the left-handed reliever. Well, if he does, most likely he's going to get it. The only question is, will it be a strike, and will he follow it across and take it to left field? If he's looking for something, it doesn't matter what it is. He's going to hit it hard. Yeah. One of the smarter hitters in the game. Well, as Steve mentioned, the question <laughs> is if it's going to be a strike. That's, or not. Been, that's been the usual first pitch. Although Veal of late has been a little more effective. But that first pitch breaking ball, when you miss with it, it just puts you in a hole. He has faced Veal one time and he drew a walk. And he's got the catbird seat at 2 and 0. Oh. You do throw a fastball here. You better make it in under his hands. Through the fastball and missed way wide. So three and zero. Oh. Willingham in the on deck circle, a great candidate for two because he's just coming back from knee surgery. Well, there's a reason he's a 323 lifetime hitter. Yeah. Nothing's changed. It's a 3 1 count. Third walk of the inning. We'll load him up. That's exactly what Robin had in mind when he brought in Veal to face Maher. And because of that, he's probably going to be taken down. And Nate Jones, who has been red hot lately, ready to come into this one. So Jones comes in, Veal steps out, we'll step out and be back after these messages.
part of a couple of months. On for the 49th time, the record three and four, the ERA continuing to go down. But he does have his work cut out for him. He inherits the bases loaded in a two run ball game. And one of the great double play targets. Stepping up to bat, Josh Willingham. Who is 0 for 3 today, a couple of strikeouts, and he is 0 for 3 against Nate Jones. That high slider and the count 1 and 0. Hits are even at four apiece, but we lead it three to one. And that is high and upper tank souvenir and out of the upper tank. Here's our AT&T Uber's multi view. Decent, not overwhelming speed on the base pad. That one at 98 upstairs in the count two and one. Nate is second in the American League and a very important statistic when you're a relief pitcher and that's first batter retired. First batter faced and retired. The first hitter hitting 098 against him. Gets even in the count at two. Blue plate special for a hitter. Bases loaded, one out, and a full count. Mm -mm good. A little quick. Well, he's looking fastball all the way, and he got it. That ball was up and in. Fortunately, the only thing he could do with it because of the positioning of it was he ain't get foul. If Nate has any confidence at all that he can get the slider over the plate, it's going to be a strikeout. The question is, with no margin for error, where will Tyler go with it? He gone change up. Whoa! Mercy. Two down. Third strikeout for Willingham. And he has him way out in front of it. That's a terrific pitch at 84 miles an hour when you've got 99 to 100 sitting in your back pocket and then you see one of those. Nobody in baseball going to be able to wait back and hit that. Not if it's a strike. That's going to get a lot of them. Morneau. It's popped to left, popped to short and struck out. And with the bases loaded. He's been overwhelming during the course of his career, hitting in excess of 330. One thing that Tyler has got to be very wary of, and I'm sure he is, is calling that slider and blocking it in the dirt. Very quickly, nothing in two. Johnny Dank's a very interested spectator. He would love to see this one end with the score three to one. That one at 99. Fouled away. Down in 
him in. Tyler keeps it in the vicinity in front of him. Nice stop. Saved a run and a couple of base runners moving into scoring position. He called the slider. Then was able to knock it down with the help of his right shin guard. Swings a lot of face side fastballs if you want to go there. That change up out in front of him. Well, I'll tell you what, on the 0 2 1 2 count, that's a dangerous pitch in this situation. It is 5 3. He went with a low fastball. Something that Morneau would have ordered up if he could have. I'm sure he wanted to get it up. He didn't. Morneau hits it out. 12th home run. He's now driven in 63. And just like that, the lead goes bye bye. Four runs on one hit. Seventh grand slam of the career of Justin Morneau. And left handers love low fastballs. Our Ford home run replay. That went a long way out. Well, all three walks this inning score. Five runs on five hits. Colabello, a homer, a double, and a walk. One and two the count. Yes, he did. But the three walks in the inning score on the Grand Slam homer by Justin Morneau.
on Comcast Sportsnet. Tune in as Charles Leesman makes his Major League debut for the South Side. Don't miss White Sox Twins Game 2 tonight at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. Jared Burton comes into the game at 1 and 6, the ERA 312 on for the 53rd time. 46 strikeouts and 49 innings. And he's walked 18, so control has been pretty good. He inherits a two run lead as the Twins, for the second time in the ballgame, take the lead. They had a brief one to nothing lead in the second, only to see the game tied and a Paul Canerco home run. Here's Diazza, top of the order for us here in the bottom of the seventh. Ouch. That got him. Ouch. The slider off the kneecap. His approach at the plate and where he stands. You get locked in and you just you can't, can't get out get of the way. No. Ball will just hunt you down. Right on the kneecap. Yeah. It sounded solid also. About the other, he is. <laughs> he's tough. Kiss hit and he still stays in the ball game. So the lead off man aboard, and that'll bring up Beckham. White Sox had a, a pitcher. The only guy that I ever wore a knee guard on my knee to hit against because I knew he was trying to take the kneecap off. <laughs> that was kind of him. That guy's name was Gary Peters. Hard sliders. Hard sliders low and in. Yeah. All our right hand <laughs> hitters were. Hitting off their front foot, getting that back leg out of the way. Soft fly ball in the left field. Gordon now three with a walk and a run scored. That'll bring up Alexei. Along with down at Joe McEwing. And here's what Alexei did back in the fifth. Been a long time coming. The two run blast on a fastball inside. At the time, made the game three to one. That's an all was beautiful. <laughs> Alexei has faced Burton seven times, has three hits. To the count. Adam Dunn on deck. Just getting home, turning in. 
Alex Rios has been traded to the Texas Rangers. And there will be game two tonight at 7:10. We'll have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet. But if you're in the area, you might want to come out because there's a good chance that Javi Sayil Garcia will be in that lineup. Get a chance to see our new 6'4", 240-pound speedster. He is wending his way here as we speak. Decent lead. That's up high, two and two. Well, the two Garcias that we traded for. Can run. Going to give the look of the lineup and perhaps the bench a whole lot more speed. That breaking ball hit on the button to right field. Nice piece of hitting. Meanwhile, two down. Has faced Burton three times. He's 0 for 3. Slam homer by Justin Morneau after we walked the bases loaded and they lead it five to three. Hi, Papa. And that'll retire the side. We'll go to the eighth, trailing by two. We appreciate the update. There you look at the way it is. 
five to three. So two run deficit as David Percy comes into the ball game. On for the 13th time. 0 and 1 ERA 174. Nate Jones a very rare bad outing. First one in a long time. Here's Arcia. Osvaldo Arcia. He's 0 for 3. Trevor Plouffe on deck. Casey Fien loosening up in the bullpen. Because of the starting pitching and some of the problems, Ron Gardner has had to go to that bullpen a lot. Casey Fien leading the team in appearances. Well, we had four pitchers go to that bump last inning. I don't ever think in my whole career on any team that I ever played that we ever saw four pitchers in one inning. Hmm. Well you played on some decent teams. Yeah. Never saw four and one inning. That's deep in the left field. And that's out of here. Garcia. With his eighth homer, and it's a 6 3 ball game. Eight and 28 in the power numbers, our Ford home run replay. It's been the day of the long ball. And as Waldo gets in the action, good effort by Diaz, but he comes up short. And here's Plouffe. A walk, a single, and a strikeout. And a very painful foul off his left foot. Evens at one. Four pitchers in an inning. And it would behoove the owners if they added another spot on the roster. Well, a few years, well, not a few, many years ago, they offered two roster spots. But arbitration was the price for those two spots. So their association <laughs> laughed and said, I don't think so. I remember when we got arbitration. Marvin Miller. Told me he thought that, that would never happen. He told us at the time there was two things to always bear in mind long after he was gone. One was never allow them to take free agency down any lower than six years. And the players couldn't believe it because they thought that four years would be a good number. And he two, never bargain away any type of arbitration. And his explanation after the walk was if there are more of you meaning free agent at the four year mark you're not near as valuable as if there are fewer of you at the six year mark. And both of those arbitration of free agency have. Paid millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to players for a long time. Well free agency was great for the game but you mix it with arbitration now that's like mixing gas with matches. It's expensive. He, he told me that. He was absolutely shocked. And I forget what he had to give up. He said it was virtually nothing. 
And they gave him, they said, well, he said, well, okay, if you want that, then give us arbitration. They said, okay. I'm not sure at the time the owners realized the consequences of arbitration and what it would mean. They couldn't have. Because I remember first arbitration case, the big one, first arbitration big one, was Jim Bronner and Bob Gilhooley. They went against Andy McPhail of the Cubs in the Bruce Souter arbitration. And they understood what the process was about, and Andy didn't. And they won $600,000, which at the time was an enormous amount of money. And that opened Pandora's box. And eventually, the owners got tired of being overwhelmed, and they hired Tal Smith. Tal Smith had a cottage industry representing all of the owners in their arbitration cases. Yeah, those guys, when I was here in 86, wanted to take one of our players to arbitration. And I told him, I said, if you take him to arbitration, I'm going to trade him. And I forget what team was the worst team in baseball at the time. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to trade him to that team. As he goes down and he's safe. And they said, well, you can't do that. That's against the rules. I said, if you take him to arbitration, I won't trade him to that team. <laughs> I said, now you can leave. And they didn't take him to arbitration. Two two pitch. So Pete Thomas is gone. One out. Thirteen strikeout by our guys today. Meanwhile, we walked seven. Three in one inning before that grand slam off the bat of Morneau. So here's Florimont. A couple of strikeouts, a walk. That coming last inning. And a run scored. All six runs courtesy of the long ball for these twins. Bormont hitting 129 right handed, 257 left handed. These two teams came into this game tied at 100 home runs. The twins now have the lead in that department. Gap out there in left center. Right over the top. Two down. With that, that'll be the leadoff hitter coming to the plate, Ryan Dozier. It was three strikeouts and a double today. Feels slightly to the right. Jordan over. One and one to count. Sox in the outfield, Diaz in left, Cody in center, and Jordan Danks in right.
grabs the strike with that one. So the count one and two. And souvenir right side. Six, six and oh for them, three, four and oh for us. And of course, we have two home runs. One by Pauly, one by Alexei. And with those two home runs, the Alex Nellius family will give a don generous donation to White Sox charities and loving memory of Ursula. One, two pitch. Charlie Leesman on the bump tonight, making his major league debut for us. Left handed pitcher is. Dozier just did get a piece of that one. And make your plans to be with us. Javi Sayil Garcia, if he gets here, will be in the lineup. And that's foul back. Take him right here. Let's get out of this inning. And get to the bottom so we can score some runs. And another souvenir. Percy has moved the ball all around. Has yet to be able to get that last one by him. Full count. Second walk is the inning for person. Eighth walk by our pitcher. And here's Maurer. That gives David Percy 12 walks in 11 innings. First pitch strike to Maurer. Yeah, Maurer's over two with two walks and a run scored. And that's chop foul.
0 2 pitch. High slicing. Diaz are giving chase, and that's going to be not playable. Percy, is that number 41? We've had some. Pretty good players wear that number. Tom Seaver. By far the most prominent. There's another one out of play. Tom Seaver wore that number for a long time. Yes, he did. Claude Osteen wore it for us. Don Mossy, Dennis Higgins, Brandon McCarthy, Dick Tidrow, Ross Baumgarten. Of course, the unforgettable Verl Tiefenhaber. He was a good one. Yeah. I'm surprised he got that number, to be honest with you. Thought it'd be hanging up somewhere, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. Nobody at second base, and they just can't seem to hook up on the side. Nope. Two on, two out. And once again, the 0 2. They uh, come up with one on the homer by Osvaldo Garcia, and they lead it 6 3. A 266 after the 54th time that leads the team in appearances. Only nine walks and 47 in the third innings with 53 strikeouts. There you look at some pretty impressive numbers. Doesn't matter left or right handers. Bowden's hitting just a paltry 190 against him. All right, let's check out our ATT tweet of the game from. At one Lynn P. Ariels 51 will be sorely missed. Alex, as I said, a perfect gentleman, good player. But I get a text from Texas about the guy, Leuri Garcia, that we got. Says great talent. Needs to cut down his swing a little bit. Can fly. 
and has a great arm. Well, like a whole lot of young guys. You eventually have to come to the realization of what kind of player you're going to be. And he's got such good speed. That with a big swing. He's hurting himself in that the on base percentage isn't what it should be or will be later on. But he's very young. He's still 22 years old. But when they start talking about the best arm in the organization in an organization that is filled with very good arms and one of the fastest men if not the fastest man in the organization that's pretty good that yeah, is well we got the fastest guy in the tiger organization now we got the fastest guy in the ranger organization and both of them control One and two, the count to Polly. Polly has homered, gone out to left, and lined out hard to center. Good eye right there, just off the plate. Gillespie on deck. We need three to tie. We trail it. Six three. Grand slam homer by Justin Morneau after we walked the bases loaded. High pop up. Ploof. Plop. One out. This ball game to this point, we failed to throw the knockout punch against Cal Gibson, who Started the game went five and two thirds, gave up three runs on only four hits. Then played right into the strength of this twin team, which is their bullpen: Dunsing, Burton, and now Feen. That's been the one consistent for them. They've done a nice job coming out of the pen. Gillespie has walked, singled, and struck out. Few hitters not to wear batting gloves. They have six runs on six hits. We have three runs on four hits. Every run today on both sides scored courtesy of the home run. Two and two. And that is out number two. That was a good hard slider low and into Gillespie. He really had very little chance on it. He had a couple pitches he could drive. Couldn't do anything with him. Chris Herman has taken over defensively in right field. Calabello, Calabello did his job today offensively. Jordan, oh, look at this little play. That's a nifty little play by Dozier right there. And that'll retire the side. Went to the ninth, trailing 6 3.
White Sox Post Game Live presented by Orland Park Nissan. Chuck Carpine and Bill Melton bring you their take on today's action and set you up for game two. Don't miss White Sox Post Game Live right after the game on Comcast Sportsnet. Double duty for our Chuck. Oh, he's allowed to go on strike. We got to talk to him. We got to talk to Jim Cornell Jr. about this. This is we can't allow that to happen. No. You, first thing you know, you get overworked, and then our know. Chuck is on tape all the time. We cannot allow that to happen. To our Chuck. Ramon Trancoso comes into the ball game at one and three. The ERA a little above five and a half. There you look at the numbers. Trying to hold it right at a three-run deficit, but to do that, you have to go right through the heart of the twin order. The Josh Willingham lead it off. He's 0 for 4 with the three strikeouts. Josh coming back from that knee surgery. I believe it was on July 3rd. First pitch, honey. Josh, who is a good hitter, but his first day back. Just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. And here's our Miller moment. It could be none other than the Grand Slam home run, the seventh of the career of Justin Morneau. After three walks, he took a low fastball at 98 miles an hour and rode it out of the ballpark. Well, because pitchers don't hit anymore, it's hard for them to understand that how much easier it is to hit something 100 miles an hour from the waist down than it is from the waist up. Well, you can always, especially left-handers, you can always drop the head of the bat on something down there. But you get it upstairs, and that's what Morneau's had trouble with, especially the last few years. He was a good high ball hitter at one point, but if you go higher than high, face high, he likes it, just can't catch up to it. Ball hit hard, slicing foul. Yes. Yeah, it is a lot easier to catch up downstairs than upstairs. Glenn Perkins throwing in a bullpen. 27 saves this year. There were a lot of teams that were interested in Glenn Perkins at the trading deadline. But a 2 0 and a 2 5 ERA. Twins weren't about to do anything with him. That's high and deep. Jordan. And that's out of here. So it's 7 3. Thirteenth. Home run of the year, second of the day. 64th run driven in. Justin Morneau having a banner day. A forward home run replay. This slider again down. He opens up. Same yeah. location. The difference is one was a slider, one was a fastball. Maybe. Maybe we'll get the idea that we're better off missing up and Ele down. Elevating yeah. to him. With him. But you're right. At one time, he was a pretty good high fastball hitter. It was. He was that. Ball hit hard. Chris Herman hitting at 233, a couple of homers, 10 knocked in. Twenty times he's had a multi homer game. The one, two. High and wide. Oh. 
Big on. Two down. For our guys in the ninth. The lower part of our batting one. As here's Arcia. He's one for four. Let off last inning with his opposite field homer. The eighth of the season. Feel for the most part straight up about equidistant. Put a little top hand on that one. But the second home of the ball game, the fifth RBI of the ball game for Morneau, and they lead it seven to three. Number one mobile app for live baseball. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. AdBat delivers White Sox baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, breaking news, and video highlights. MLB.tv premium subscribers can get AdBat premium features for free and watch live games. So download AdBat now on the Apple App Store, Google Play, Kindle App Store, BlackBerry World, or text AdBat to 31826. Glenn Perkins comes into the ball game. We talked about his numbers. They're spectacular. He's on for the 45th time. 54 strikeouts, 10 walks, and 44 innings. Pretty impressive. Well, you mentioned that there were inquiries about this guy. There was a lot of them, but I don't Outside think. Outside of Maurer, he might have the most value of anybody on that ball. Yeah. And there were some teams in desperate need of a lockdown closer, and he has been that. That ball hit hard. Stretch! Right in front of Bacardi at the park. One pitch, one out. It's a non safe situation, and sometimes you can get to a closer because of the lack of adrenaline. And Tyler Flowers hit that ball a long way, but wrong part of the ballpark. So here's Blake to Cody. He's lined hard to first and struck out a couple of times. Takes first pitch strike. Yeah, Perkins has a lot of value. I would think they could have gotten a bunch, but he's a guy with his talent. At 30 years old, they just 
Didn't want to entertain the idea of letting him go and trying to fill that spot again. Last year, he appeared in 70 games. He wasn't the full-time closer. He saved 16. This year, as a full-time closer, he's shown that he relishes the role. Well, he's throwing about six inches quicker out of that bullpen than he was as a starter. There's no doubt. And he was a good starter. 2008, starting 26 times, he was 12 and 4. That was by far his best run. Started 24 games in 2010. Then they moved him to the bullpen. So, two out here and one more chance. And it's Diazza. 0 for 3. He's hit by a pitch right on the kneecap. He just nobody on our ball club <laughs> Take, takes the beating like he does. No. Including Tyler and Josh. That a boy. Bullet back to the middle. He's now one for four. And that's our first hit since the fifth inning. The select say he hit his second homer of the season. His first since the second day of the season. Which is remarkable. First pitch strike. Four home runs for their guys, two for our guys. Canerico and Ramirez. He safe fair. It will. And it's going to be a ground rule double. So Gordon. Now one for four. Such a big difference when you come in in a non save situation for a closer. This ball drifts on the inner portion. Gordon hit it hard enough so that it didn't have a chance to hook foul. Go on, Alexi. Have a good day. Alexi's one for four. That two run homer also last time up lined out hard to right field. A reminder game two will start it. 7 10 first pitch. And there's a base hit. So he's going to be waved around. And as Steve told you, non safe situations are conducive for run scoring. That one run makes so much of a difference. That one run that took it to a four run lead took Perkins out of his save situation into what for him would have been a game finished and just an appearance. So just like that, he's given up two, and now he's got to face the tying run, and he's looking at a guy more than capable of getting the job done. Adam for three with a walk. Bad news is he's 0 for 6 against Perkins. So he's due. One time, Adam. 17,439. Let's give him a thrill. But game two tonight, making his major league debut, Southpaw Charlie Leesman for us. Liam Hendricks, a right hander for them. Can't make it to the ballpark. We'll have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Abisail Garcia. We might see him in that lineup. Game two, he was hitting 370 down at Charlotte. And 
and this ball game is over. So, hits are even to seven apiece. They won it seven to five. And base on balls just eight or something. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. That and the long ball. In fact, the two runs scored in the ninth inning. Out of the 12 runs scored today, were the only two not scored courtesy of the home run. So, Minnesota got the job done. The big blow being off the bat of Morneau. All right, and he is our GMC player of the game, Justin Morneau. Two for five, two homers, one a grand slam after we had walked the bases loaded. And that coming in the seventh inning. Our GMC player of the game. So, for my partner, Steve Stone, our director, Jim Anjou, our producer, Mike Leary, our associate producer, Dave Ross. Our technical manager, Mark Harper, also the executive producer, Jim Corno Jr. And for Mike Mayer, Frank Bottom. Frank Leone, the Bulletin Sound. This is the Hawks. So long, everybody. Coming up next, the Olin Park Nissan Post Game Show with Chuck and Bill. You've been watching Chicago White Sox Baseball on Comcast Sports Network.